For many years I've been obsessed with a solo cello piece called Nomus Alpha by Greek composer Yanis Sinarchus. The piece is a perfect fusion of my two passions, the mathematics of symmetry and contemporary music. And to celebrate Sinarchus's 100th anniversary, I've been working with artist Simon Russell to create an animation to guide listeners and players through the piece. Simon and I have worked together before on an animation exploring the mathematics behind Messiaen's piece, The Quartet for the End of Time, including an amazing use of prime numbers. Just like Messiaen, Zanarchus too loved mathematics. Indeed, Nomus Alpha is de de dedicated to three mathematicians, including one of my heroes, Everis Galois, who created the language we mathematicians use for exploring symmetry a language called group theory that I actually use every day as a mathematician researching symmetry. The symmetries at the heart of the composition of Nomus Alpha are the symmetries of a cube. There are actually 24 ways to rotate a cube from its starting position. Nine rotations of a quarter of a turn round the axis through the opposite faces. Then there are six rotations of a half a turn around an axis through opposite edges and then eight rotations of a third of a turn around the axis through opposite corners. That makes 23 rotations, but we mathematicians add another rotation, which is to leave the cube where it is. It's like a zero rotation. So that makes 24 rotations in total. Now, Nomus Alpha is divided into 24 sections. So my immediate thought was, well, there's a section for each symmetry. However, as I dug deeper into the piece, I discovered something much more interesting is going on. The piece is divided into six groups of four sections. The first three sections in each group correspond to three symmetries of the cube. A label in our animation will keep track of the symmetry being played. And the fourth section is a more fluid uh, idea and imagines the cube kind of morphing. Xenarchus places eight musical textures for the cello on the corners of the cube, and in our animation we've called those S1 up to S8. In each section, these corners are played in a fixed order corresponding to two tetrahedron that can be embedded inside the cube. At the end of each section, the cube then undergoes a rotation to rearrange the musical textures. The same path is mapped out in the new section, but the textures are now played in a new order. A second cube which we don't show in our animation, keeps track of the time spent on each corner. Fascinating thing for me is how Xenarchus chooses the symmetries. He starts with two seed symmetries called D and Q12. D is a third of a turn through opposite corners and Q12 a half turn through opposite edges. These control the first two sections. But to get the symmetry for the third section, he rotates the cube using symmetry D and then rotates again using the symmetry Q12 the combined effect is a new arrangement you can get in one go by doing symmetry Q4, a rotation of a quarter turn around an axis through opposite faces. For Xenarchus, each new symmetry is got by combining the two previous symmetries. This is a bit like the way the Fibonacci numbers are defined. 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13. You get the next number by adding the previous two numbers. Now, it takes 18 symmetries before the sequence repeats itself. This is actually the longest cycle of symmetries you can realize in a cube. If you choose two different seed symmetries, then the sequence can be shorter. So it's intriguing to know how much experimentation Xenarchus did to discover this longest path. The 18 symmetries are not unique. Some of these symmetries are repeated twice. There's a map called the Cayley graph that one can draw of how the 24 symmetries of the cube are connected together. In our animation, we keep track of the path that Xenarchus's choice of 18 symmetries maps out in the 24 symmetries of the cube. This idea of a Fibonacci sequence of symmetries is not something that's ever been considered before in mathematics. It's a new idea that Xenarchus contributes to mathematics and that set me off on a new journey in my own exploration of the mathematics of symmetry. Often mathematics inspires music, but here we see music inspiring new mathematical ideas. <laughs>